Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day, and if you have not been, that's about to change, because today we're looking at x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Now you've done x and y-intercepts before, but uh, we're going to expand on that a little bit. Now, it's the same basic principle, except now instead of x-intercepts, we're going to start calling them zeros. So zeros are the same as x-intercepts. Store that in your head. And I'm just going to do a quick review, really quick of that. Now, x-intercepts are our zeros. That's where it's going to cross the x-axis here. And we'll see we have this function gr crossing the x-axis at the point negative 3, 0. So that's going to be one of our x-intercepts. And we've got it crossing the x-axis over here at 3, 0. That's a second of our x-intercepts. Now, the y-intercept, that's just where we're going to be crossing the y-axis. And we see the graph crosses right down here at, neg at 0, negative 4. So remember, the x-intercept, the 0 is where it crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. Looking at any coordinate plane, you'll notice two things. Anywhere on the x-axis, anywhere we're going to have a 0, what is the y-value? If I put a point here, what's the y-coordinate? Well, it's going to be 0. If I put a point here, what's the y-coordinate going to be? It's also going to be 0. Anywhere we go on this line, the y-coordinate will be 0. Now, if we're going to find the x-intercept or the zeros algebraically, all we need to do is set y, whoops, set y equal to 0 and then solve for x. Same kind of thing here. If we look at the y-axis, we're looking for the y-intercept. All of our x values will be 0. If I pick this point here, my x value is 0. If I pick this point here, my x value is 0. Uh, and these y values don't matter. Anywhere on this line here, the x value will be 0. So whenever I'm finding my y-intercept, I just plug 0 in for x. Here we have a function f of x equals 2x squared plus x minus 15. First, let's start by finding our zeros or our x-intercepts. Remember, when we find our zeros, what is the y value equal to? Right, the y, oh, look at that lovely y right there. Y, remember, our y equals 0. So, um, for this function here, remember, our f of x is equivalent to y. So instead of f of x, we're going to plug in 0 is equal to 2x squared plus x minus 15. I've gone ahead and I've factored that out. So our 0 equals 2x squared plus x minus 15 factored to 2x minus 5 and x plus 3. Remember, um, if you're not sure how to do that, you multiply the a term and the c term. Find your factors that add to b. Replace it in group from there. Uh, but now this is easy to solve, right? We just solve for each factor, and we're going to get our zeros at um, x equals 5 halves and negative 3. So we'll say our zeros of f are at those values, 5 halves and negative 3. Next, let's go ahead and find our y-intercept. Now, our y-intercept, remember, what's our x value equal at y for every y-intercept? The x equals 0. So, I'm just going to rewrite our function here, and I'm going to replace our f of x with y. That's going to give me y equals 2x squared plus x minus 15. And if I plug in x equals 0 for each of these x's, that'll give me y equals 2 times 0 squared plus 0 minus 15, and we're just going to be left with y equals negative 15. So my y-intercept is going to be at the point 0, negative 15. All right, let's do one more. Uh, here we have f of x equals square root of x plus 3. Let's start with finding our zeros. Remember, to find our 0, we want to plug our 0 in for y, or f of x. So that'll give us 0 equals square root of x plus 3. If I subtract that 3 over, I'll get negative 3 equals the square root of x. Okay, now, a lot of us might want to square both sides to get this x by itself. However, take a moment, breathe, observe, see if you can think of anything fishy about this. Here we have a negative 3 equal to a square root. 
Now anything that is square rooted is always going to be positive. So this number here does not exist. There is no x value. So when you get this case where you're not going to have any x to satisfy for the y equals 0 that we plugged in, you're not going to have any zeros. So this function has no zeros. So watch out for imaginary numbers. Watch out for any uh, any cases like this where you have a square root equal to a negative. Anything like that, there doesn't necessarily have to be a zero. So in this case, we don't have any zeros. To find our y-intercept, all we're going to do is plug in uh, x equals zero this time. So I'm going to have y instead of my f of x equals square root of now I'm plugging in the 0 for x, plus 3. That's just going to give me y equals 3. So my y-intercept is going to be at 0, 3.